from coast to coast and around the world, it's time to praise the Lord. Join us on Praise the Lord from the vacation capital of the world, exciting Central Florida, as we bring you anointed pastors, evangelists, teachers, authors, and other special guests with testimonies and teachings and music to glorify God as we lift up Jesus Christ as Lord. today to have a, a precious friend of mine, a brother in the Lord here with me, and I'm excited to hear what he has to share with you. I know that God's put a word on his heart, and I want to hear a lot uh, about what God's doing in his life and ministry, so please join me in welcoming Evangelist Rich Vera. God bless awesome. you, brother, you, brother Rich. So God glad that you. you're here with us today. Thank you so much. You know, we've been spending some time before we came on the set today just sharing back and forth and talking and you know we've we've already been in a move of the spirit today <laughs> yes. you and i have been but i want you to take just a few minutes and let people know i know god's using you in the miraculous i know that he's using you in salvation you are an evangelist in the truest form of the word yes. but i want you to take a little bit of time and and let the audience know uh what god has been doing and, and share some things that have been happening in your meetings and throughout your ministry definitely um you know all began for me in 2005 um, i was saved since 1990 i got in Orlando, uh, the Lord anointed me in a powerful way. Uh, when I was my early 20s, I was holding large crusades all over Asia, Latin America, filling up stadiums. You know, as a young guy, I, it was like a, I had a big loaded gun. I didn't know what to do with it. <laughs> just shot all over the place. Right. And the right. power of God moved. But uh, I knew there was, there was more than that. Mm -hmm. You know, I've seen tens of thousands come to the altars and get saved. Miracles. I've seen people in the Philippines, uh, a child that was dead, come back to life. Wow. And as good wow. as that is, I said, God, there's something more than just what I'm seeing. Not, not neglecting what I'm seeing, but there's something more. Mm -hmm. So I went through a hard time of my life. I fell away from the Lord. Mm -hmm. I went through my wilderness. I yeah. went back to the world and I did all the things. Like the Bible says, I went back to my vomit. Right. And uh, my personality is if I'm serving God, I'm radical and I give my life. If I'm serving the devil, I'm radical and I give my life. Mm -hmm. You know, so I thought that everything was not over for me. How could it be? God used me in a powerful way. God anointed me, called me as a young man in Orlando, gave me an incredible healing ministry that was way beyond my experience and my years. And how could I find myself now completely away, working a job, making a lot of money, living in Hawaii, mm -hmm. and backsliding mm -hmm. completely. Mm -hmm. You know, so devil brought condemnation, guilt, people telling me, God is done with you. Never again, get a job, go to school, do something else. But God, kept me on his mind. Thank you, Jesus. And 2005, November 14, 2005, I was just doing my normal stuff in Maui, Hawaii, and suddenly I was having dinner with some friends and I started feeling sick. Mm -hmm. So I thought it was because I was riding my skateboard, you know, and I go, maybe I'm out of shape or something. Well, to make a long story short, I passed out on the ground. When that happened, my spirit was taken out of my body and I was taken to heaven. I was there for six hours. Uh, my friends that saw me there, they called 911. I still have the, the log of the call and the, mm. and the paper clip of the article. They thought I had a heart attack and I died. So they came <laughs> rushing in. Uh, while I'm in heaven, what I'm seeing is, you know, I always thought when I see Jesus, you know, I'm going to jump on his back, you know, I'm going to hug him and kiss him. Well, that wasn't the case. When I saw this white light and this white area full of light, a light that was brighter than any light I've ever seen, and I saw the Lord, but I, all I could see was his feet because the glory of God was so mighty, my sinful person could not look up passing his feet. Wow. So I wow. spent hours, what it seemed to me hours, on his feet, holding his feet, crying, literally my tears, my boogers were all over the <laughs> Lord's feet. I'm telling you, uh, my prayer was not, I'm happy to be here. My prayer was for mercy. I realized, suddenly came to me, God, I thought I did a lot. 21-year-old guy, you know, young guy, preaching to masses in Latin America, all over Asia, you know, reaching people by the thousands. And yet I felt that everything I did was not even a drop in the bucket for what the Lord called me to do in this earth. And I felt an incredible sense of failure. 
Mm. And I said, I've wasted my life. I've been selfish, you know, even backsliding. I realized it's not about me. It's about selfishness, mm -hmm. you know, because something happened to me and, and that was an act of selfishness. So when I'm begging the Lord to have mercy and I really literally entreated with the Lord for hours because I knew that my soul was at stake. Now, people say once saved, always saved. I'm not going to argue that. All I know is that I knew mm -hmm. that if I didn't beg for mercy, mm -hmm. I could have gone to hell at any second. Wow. And I beg with all of my might. I'm talking about felt like hours. Mm. And ask, I say, God, give me a chance. If you send me back, I'll promise you I'll serve you. I do anything. I'll go anywhere you want me to go. I'll marry or single. I say, I don't care, God. I'll do whatever. Please give me a chance. In this process of begging to the Lord, when I say begging, I was literally begging God. Mm -hmm. um, suddenly, I hear in the background that the ambulance the notion of the ambulance, and I got up, pick up my head, and I looked down, and I could see through the heavens, then pulling on the backyard of the house, opening the back, pulling the little, you know, little bed, the, the stretcher, and so on, and on that second, I wake up, and I was back in my body, but when I wake up, the first feeling I had was this, you know what, I said, I'm alive, that was the first feeling, the second feeling was, this is not a sickness unto death, mm -hmm. but it's a visitation of God. So I told my friends, my girlfriend at that time, and I said, do not let them come in. I said, this is not a sickness, this is God. Now, they were not Christians. Mm -hmm. So they go, what the bling bling? What do you mean <laughs> this is God? You just had a heart attack. And I said, get me in the house. This is God. Finally, they talk him out of it. They said they had to come and check my vitals and so on. And they signed a paper saying, we're releasing this man to you. If something happens, we're not responsible. When they signed the paper, they pulled me by my legs in the house. They threw me on, the, on my friend's couch, and I was out again. But this time, I wasn't begging the Lord. I was entering the, the, the doors of heaven. Mm -hmm. And the Lord, the first thing God did for me when I saw the Lord, now the feeling was different. There was no more fear. There was no terror. Now there was an immense sense of peace and joy. And it's funny. forgiveness. I, that's the amazing and thing. It. You know, because when I saw him, the first thing he told me was this. I said, why did you let what people said, <laughs> what you did, what others have said about you bring you down? Don't you know that when you were a child and he was telling me things in my life, as he was talking to me, I could see on a vision all the events where I thought I was lucky on that motorcycle accident and it was God saving me. The day I got saved, how the Lord took me around when I used to walk in Orlando, sometimes seven, eight hours from work to my house and just talk with the Lord as a young man. And the Lord says, don't you know that I'm the one that chose you and called you and saved you? When the Lord is speaking this to me, literally waterfalls, because I live from Hawaii, I know what waterfalls are like. <laughs> I could feel it going to my soul and the more he spoke, the, the, the junk, the bitterness, the hatred that I had, because I was full of hatred for Christians yeah. and for preachers. Yeah. Because people in the world, they accepted me. People in the church, they cast me out. So mm -hmm. I, I mean, I wanted to fight the whole world. Mm -hmm. you know? And when the Lord was speaking to me, I'd keep feeling these feelings just drained out. And when the Lord says, don't you know I'm the one that called you and chose you, and nothing will take you away from my hand. Now go back. And this time, I say, you're going to serve me. I am calling you. Now I'm crying now with exceeding joy. And my body's so full of the energy of God. And the Lord lays his hand on my head. And the Lord says, now, because my question was, nobody wants me. Who's going to take me? Mm -hmm. I did so much wrong. I mean, I backslid. It's all over the place. My ministry is done. And the Lord says, now I'm the one that is calling you. And I am sending you. And you respond to me. And I will bring people your way that will love you, will help you, and will support you. Well, I'm talking about seven hours of, I mean, I had an experience that uh, I shared. In fact, I was on TV in Hawaii, I was able to share the whole experience. But when I came back, my friends, it was two in the morning, I asked him to take me home. They threw me on my bed for three days. I could not get up. My body was electrified for three days. And, and the Lord just kept me there. And I started confessing every sin that I knew. Sins that I thought, that, oh, God, I'm not going to say that because you Since know you my heart. you even thought about committing. Oh, brother, I was, make, I was making up some sins just in case, <laughs> brother. You know, and, and I tell you something. When I confess every sin, the Spirit of the Lord kept filling me with such a love and joy. Now, the Christians that I hated, now I wanted to run and kiss them, brother. Now, the oh, people that, that did me wrong and, and threw me away saying you're nothing but a failure and a liar you'll never rise up now i wanted just to grab him and kiss him and love him it was a love man and i'm not a kissy kissy guy with guys <laughs> but i just wanted to go and grab it i want to kiss your forehead man i'm so happy you know but it was the love of god that was beyond any love 
you I've know, ever experienced. As you're sharing this with me, it just it's it's so evident and so clear why God has anointed you and called you in such an evangelistic measure uh, oh. as you're bringing people to salvation because you had an absolute experience of salvation That's right. and deliverance. You felt the forgiveness oh. of God. You felt the grace of God. But I want to I want to shift gears just a little yes. bit because I want to I want to get on this while we have time. God is using you in the miraculous, and I know there's people that are watching today yes. that are believing for a healing. Um, I've been blessed. God's used me in signs and wonders as yes. well throughout my life and ministry. And I'm really interested. I want to ask you a question because your perspective on this, I, I think, will really bless me. And I think it'll bless a lot of people that are watching. Uh, we've heard so many different ministers that God uses in, in, in signs and wonders. You ask them, what is the, what is the key? to God using you? What is the key to receiving a miracle? Some people have said surrender. Some people have said faith. Some people fasting and prayer. Um, I remember the first healing that God did in my life. I was, uh, I think, either 17 or 18 years old. Someone asked for prayer and I told God, I can't do this. And I heard the Holy Spirit speak to me. Now you know the secrets of the miraculous. Awesome. So for me, it was surrender. For, but, but I know that for everybody else, there's a different access point. What would you say for you personally, and of course for the person that's watching today, what is it that they need to do to get that miraculous thing to happen for them? Yes, you know, we have seen just about every kind of healing that the Bible talks about and even some more. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you are administering healing, you know, I think that there is a place where you can live in the glory of God. Mm -hmm. You don't have to wait for the anointing. I used to believe, well, I'm waiting for the anointing to come on me. Right. And then when I had that experience, the Lord showed me Christ in you, mm -hmm. the hope of glory. Mm -hmm. And then when I realized, when it became real to me, I'm telling you, I can move in the power of God at any given time, any time, wow. any place. Wow. And I've proved this. You know, in fact, in my services, when I open my services, a lot of people that don't believe much, I mean, I open the service like I want to challenge anyone here. If you don't believe I'm from God and God heals, stand up and come and challenge me. I have done this <laughs> dozens of times on television. So people come up and say, well, I believe you're a fake. All you want is money. Go, it's all right. Mm -hmm. And then I seen God in seconds with power so change them that now they are my catchers, my ushers, and my I love it. monthly I love partners. It. I love it. You know, so there is a place where you can live in the glory of God. And the way it happened for me is when I had that experience with God, I never let go of the walk. I sacrificed a lot of things in my life. Mm -hmm. I sacrificed a lot of comfortable things, friendships, you know, but once I tap into the, into the glory of God, I realize what keeps you out of the glory is sin. Right. What keeps you tapping right. to the glory. That's not popular to say that, uh, but, but it's, it's the, truth. the truth. You know, it and is sin truth. is not just fornicating and doing drugs and running with somebody else's wife. That, that's the extreme. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm talking about the gossiping tongue. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the criticizing, the murmuring. I'm talking about the jealousy for one another. You see, because Jesus said, it's not what, the, what comes into a man that defiles a man, but it's what comes out of the man that defiles the man. Mm -hmm. So when you let things that are against the, uh, uh, the pattern of the scripture, what happens is it drains out the spirit of God and it fills you with the spirit of the world. Okay. So the Lord told me, Rich, watch your walk. Wow. Be free from bitterness. Be free from jealousy. Be free from murmuring. And there's times that I do it because that's just the way we are. And right away I say, God, I got to make it right with God. Mm -hmm. You know, so I believe living a life, checking your life according to the word of God, not according to what's famous. Mm -hmm. Because people say, well, he's doing it. They're doing it. But that's the matter. What is God saying? And I seen that that attitude in God gives you abiding power. Mm -hmm. Now, in the other end, the receiving power, I deal with people that come to my services a thousand times for the same thing. Mm -hmm. So I went to prayer. I said, God, what is it? What is it that they, they get knocked down on the floor, they scream, they roll, they get drunk, they get up next week, the same prayer. Back in the line again. They, on yeah. the line again. Mm -hmm. You know, and the Bible says in Corinthians, says he that comes to him, uh, it talks about coming with an open face mm -hmm. in Corinthians 3.18. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that sincerity is the, one of the main things that I've seen work in my ministry. When we come in and says, God, you know, uh, this is an example. People said to me, well, you know, I know I have cancer, but I'm not supposed to say it. So I'm just going to claim. I said, well, hold it. I said, if you have something, it's okay if you acknowledge it. Mm -hmm. But it's, that's not the end of the situation. You Most know? every miracle we read about in the Gospels, 
people confessed what they had a problem exactly. with, what they needed. And Jesus moves through transparency. You know, one of my favorite scriptures is Mark chapter 3, when the man had the withered hand. Jesus said, stretch forth your hand. Show it to me. When you have integrity and transparency, that's when miracles begin to happen. And there's nothing wrong with saying, you know what, I struggle with this. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with saying, I have cancer for the last three years or so on. Because when you come to terms with what you have, then you put yourself in a spot to bring glory to God. Because God cannot be glorified if you don't give him the opportunity for him to show off in a situation. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so I, I noticed that when I started teaching the people, you know, go ahead and come to terms. Right. But don't stop there. Right. Now, when men stop, when men's ability stops, know that God's ability begins. Yeah. You know, and when people come to terms with God, then they're, will, they're able to believe for the hand of God. And I'm telling you, we're seeing miracles that are staying with people after years and years of years. So being sincere, being honest with God, not being religious and saying, well, you know, I'm not supposed to say it because the Bible says, yeah, you know, the Bible works in people's lives when it's received by revelation. Mm -hmm. You know, if the Lord reveals it to you, your confession carries power. Right. But if you just confess it because the Bible says and, and your friend tells you you're supposed to say it, you're just like a parrot talking and repeating things over and over, but nothing happens. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and I believe also that uh, people have gotten away from the teaching of the Bible that says you will lay hands on the sick. Right. And they will recover. Right. You know, and after all, I mean, there's many ways God heals. I mean, God can heal through, through worship and through things and so on. You know, but we got to go back to the old-fashioned way. If you're sick, Amen. let the elders of the church come and lay hands on you on the prayer of faith. Mm -hmm. Now, this is what I tell people when you pray for somebody. Because I have a group of 20-something leaders that I'm training to be in ministry. And when I put them to pray for a sick person, some of them, Father, I thank you that for this life I'm blessed. And when they were little and do this, I'm blessed. And I said, oh, hold it. I said, what is the need? Cancer. Then why are you blessing their mom, their dad? You go all around the world, bless the little children in Egypt. and bless the ones in Asia. and bless it. I said, focus. Right. Right. You know, the prayer of faith is a prayer that is focused and yet carries the power of God for the moment. Mm -hmm. When people come in my meetings, just last Sunday, a lady came crippled with a, I mean, walking with a, uh, with one of those walkers. The lady's been sick for years and comes to the service because the week before her sister, the same way got healed, the week before two people came out of wheelchairs. So they wow. say, I heard that in this place, God is healing. And she says, yeah. And I say, yeah, God is healing. I say, do you believe God can heal you? Well, I hope so. The doctor says, I, say, I didn't ask you what the doctor says. Mm -hmm. Do you believe? Do you believe? You see, yeah. we have walked away from personal <laughs> faith. Mm -hmm. You see, I can believe for you. I can believe that God heals. Mm -hmm. I can believe that God can raise somebody from a wheelchair in Africa, in Latin America, in Asia. But can you believe that God can do it for you? Mm -hmm. And that's where personal faith has been lost. You know, so people come over uh, uh, expecting the faith of the evangelist to get you healed. Right. And we stop exercising personal faith. Well, how often did Jesus say, do you believe? And, you know, he, he talked to the father whose, whose child was uh, oppressed by the devil. And he asked the father, do you believe? And the father said, I do believe, but help my unbelief. Exactly. We have to have that personal faith, but we also have to understand that if it's not there, he's not going to necessarily disqualify That's us. That's exactly right. He'll give us the strength and he'll give us the grace to have that faith. And, and the know, time to grow into it. And the time to grow you know, into it. And, and I and feel that that's happening for people. We have just a few minutes and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you in just a second to look into the camera and just yes. begin to minister to people. Because I, I really do feel that faith is being stirred up in somebody. Yes. That personal faith that Brother Rich Vera was talking about, that faith to say, I believe for myself, not for someone else or for someone else's situation, but I believe that God can do this for me. Brother Rich, look into that camera, if you yes. would, and just begin to let the Lord use you. We've just got a minute or so. Yes, left, you know, some pray. of you that are watching, you have gone to every service. People says, I've gone to every evangelist. Nothing happens. It's time that you believe God for yourself. Because we can believe for you, but when we're not home with you, we cannot carry you into keeping the healing. But the Bible says, for them that believe, all things are possible. And we see that every single weekend in Orlando. I want to pray. I feel there's people watching us that they have bone problems. I'm telling you something. Thank God you, wants to heal people with bones, whether it's arthritis, whether it's crippleness, people that have problems on their knees. There's an anointing to heal bones right now. All you have to do is raise your hands, stretch your faith to Jesus, and believe that right now in the name of Jesus, the healing touch of God goes out of this television screen and touches your body. I rebuke all form of 
arthritis, any problems with your bones or cancers. There's somebody with an eye condition. You have a problem with your eye. There's an infection on your right eye that God is healing you. And if you receive it right now and you call, you're going to see that when you go to your doctor in the next couple weeks, you're supposed to go and visit a doctor. You're going to find that God is working a miracle. So go ahead and raise your hands and receive the touch of God. And I believe right now that the power of God is going through your body, healing you and bringing deliverance in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen Thank you, Lord. and amen. Brother Rich, it has been an honor and a pleasure to sit here Bless and you, share brother. with you. I know you've blessed the TBN audience. We're so thankful for that. And I know that many of you are starting to feel something happening. You're feeling the power of God moving on you. Some of you may just right now notice that you're not even sick anymore, that your symptoms are gone, that your pain is gone. And what I want you to do is I want you to remember the word that says we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. So I want you to call that number on your screen. Share with us what God has done for you. We're looking forward to hearing from you. We're so thankful you were with us today. We love you. And remember, praise the Lord. God bless you. This program has been brought to you through the prayers and contributions of our faithful partners throughout North America and the world.